This is The You Show, and you can reach us at theyoushow at outlook.com. Our email is usually always on the screen. And what's our show going to be about today? We have a few different things. The first thing I'm going to open up with is if we have time later on in the show, we're going to give you a few consumer hints, um, consumer notes. It will be our consumer episode if we have time to do that. We're going to start out with an interview with um, Ms. Chappelle is interviewing Susan Brown Miller. Susan Brown Miller, for anybody who doesn't know, is a historian, a civil rights worker, a worker for female rights, an author, and um, we're going to come in on the middle of the conversation now that we taped for the Your Information show. So we'll start it right now in the middle of the conversation. Uh, That's Susan Brown Miller speaking. That, I thought, now, listen, is my job here strictly to be an organizer? I mean, or do I also write about this? It was confusing for me. Right, know? because that's what you were doing. I mean, I you were writing. organizing the Speak Out conference. And then <laughs> when the Speak Out got into New York magazine, author, here's the author, <laughs> yeah, she. <laughs> a big splash. Uh, I thought, now wait a second, am I facilitating events for other journalists? I am a journalist myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, I decided that I was going to write a book on it. A lot of people decided they were going to write a book. Right. But I am, a lot of men thought, oh, great, so they are all right. When you were talking about starting in the civil rights movement, I mean, yeah. like Mississippi and, you know, the lunch counter, yeah. uh, that there were men there who were, you know, they're there also uh, trying to help with voter registration and, and all this stuff. And they're seeing that there's real discrimination against blacks, but not against women. Well, that is unfortunately true. Uh, we're coming on the 50th anniversary of Freedom Summer. When uh, whites in the North were, were called by a uh, black, particularly SNCC, student on Bound 4, and also for Congress of Racial Equality, we were asked to join them in the South for summer of voter registration. And uh, my friend Chad Whitman and I uh, answered the call. And uh, we went. Just before we finished with our work, That is Susan Brown Miller speaking. So I was in Mississippi historian and women's rights worker life, and author. Being interviewed by Miss Chappelle, another author.
But you know, I was always a writer, and there was a story in Mississippi. I did want to write it, and I did have a friend working for the Little Force, and he did, um, you know, say he would, uh, you know, give it to uh, and with the editor, and it did get published. And that was probably my uh, first uh, public piece, really. Did yeah. that feel like the beginning? Did that feel like, yes, this is the, I'm on the right path? Because well, I had to go, actually, you know. I felt it was in service to the movement. Uh, no, you know, I've lived in the for those few years, and I've, uh, people would say, and, uh, what do you do? And so, it's sort of embarrassed to say, you know, I'm not trying to do more than, oh, right for those words. I didn't know it was important then, you know. It was, yeah, I can't think it was important. So how did you get up the courage to start writing this book on rape? Because there nothing because like this exists before. Been, this was 1970, you know, the civil rights movement was right. 64, 65. And I started getting um, little TV jobs and went like that. I really thought my future was in TV. But um, when the women's movement started, I swore to myself I'd never get involved with another movement. Why? Of rape. Yeah. 
when you read it, you think, well, yes, okay, I, you know, what, from like, you know, we're starting. I go back to the code of Hammurabi. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's, a, it's extraordinary. Yeah, it was extraordinary for me to discover this un, uh, unknown history, this hidden history. It was extraordinary to me. Uh, because I didn't know, I was asking questions and then I was finding answers, you know, in history. Like, it wasn't until the 13th century, folks, in England, that uh, the law recognized rape as a crime against a woman's body. Before the 13th century, there had been an evolution of thinking, and rape was um, a crime against a husband's property or a crime against the father's property, right? The daughter. Yeah. So if you look around today, there are still some countries in this world, unfortunately, where they haven't come to the idea that rape is a crime by blood, but they have some of these library of countries. But all the denial about like World War One, you know, oh, there wasn't that much rape in World War One. When you start reading these accounts of what people were saying, yeah. And, and you whatever Bangladesh. Uh, whenever a ground army, wherever, moves forward. So that was part of our show from Susan Brown Miller uh, and the author, Ms. Chappelle. And the chickens, they have chickens. I found an interesting article in. Let me um, cut this off a little bit. Let me put this on pause if I can. Okay, so I'll put that on pause for a minute. I want to read this article that I found in the Jewish home. <laughs> I have to read it because I haven't seen it anywhere else. And it was from the week of, um, let's see. It's from the week of June 25th of July 1st. And the article says, who will grace the new $10 bill? Yep, the $10 bill is getting a makeover for the first time in more than a century, U.S. paper currency will feature the face of a female. On Thursday, Treasury Secretary Jack Lew announced plans to release a newly redesigned $10 bill set to be unveiled in 2020. Okay, so we have a way to go. <laughs> so it's going to be unveiled in 2020. It will feature a woman who has contributed to and represents the values of American democracy. No names or hints that were given as to the new face on the currency. What you see on the screen is not relevant to the article. They're two different things. This article is from the Jewish Home. It's a publication of Five Towns and Queens Community. The release, the release year coincides with the 100th anniversary of women obtaining the right to vote. So cool. So 2020 will be the 100th anniversary of women obtaining the right to vote. I gather there's going to be a few celebrations for that um, all over the city in all the different boroughs. So um, I'm going to get back to this. Hold on. We are going to get back to this interview. Ms. Chappelle, author of a book, is interviewing Susan Brown Miller, a famous historian, author, women's rights leader, women's rights worker, and also a civil rights worker. And this is Susan Brown Miller speaking. Beauty and booty. Yeah, right? I think it's a beauty and booty. That's yeah. what you get. But you see, it's not fair to say beauty. It's a soul. It's any woman who's in the past. Yeah. Right. It's important. Um, when do we get to talk about you and your work? Well, but we, but I, 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 whenever you want, but it seems like I, I, I'm so interested in what you were saying. Um, well, I really. Loved your book, Blueprints uh, for Gender Roles. Yeah, the title. <laughs> yeah. It's really it's, it's ironic. Yeah. It's, it's because I had a uh, writing teacher who I thought I would, would was really going to love. I gave this woman all this power. I was in a, in a pretty vulnerable position, and I thought yeah. she's going to save me. She's going to help me. She's going to. This is an interesting you know, really story. Me. And, and she hated my work. She said, oh. "You know what's wrong with all you new little feminists?" Today, like Mary Gates, well, you're writing about rape, you're writing about drug addiction. Don't you realize when you do that, you know, you're you're part of the problem. You have a moral obligation to write stories that provide blueprints for future generations of young women to lead their lives. And that's where you got your title. And I did. Yes, I I had my head down. I was writing it all down because I 
was starting to cry. Yeah. And I was like, well, I will just. Can I tell you what was permissible and not permissible? Yes. What, what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to yeah, say. Listen, I don't care. I kind of don't know this. <laughs> but it's funny when I was. You know, I also had this great mention that you got in the New York Times book review of a couple of weeks ago. Who's that guy? Who gave guy? you a whole Oh my God, Harlan Cohen yeah. gave you a whole you know, paragraph. That was good. He, he writes, um, he's like Nelson DeMille. He writes like big, uh, like Tarzan. There's part of the interview. It was a wonderful interview. It happened a couple of years ago, maybe, I think, two years ago. And, um, and on the topic of women's history, like I said, in 2020, which is a few years off, we will have the unveiling of the new, newly redesigned $10 bill set to be unveiled in 2020. That will feature a woman who has contributed to and represents the values of American doc democracy. I wonder who that woman would be. Like, which woman is going to be on the new $10 bill? That would be kind of interesting. Okay, so let me put this on pause again. So, you've been listening to The You Show. And it's The You Show at Outlook.com. Um, I wanted to do a few consumer things today, but um, may only do one. You know what, in fact, I'm gonna show you something on the screen. Something that I really don't like, I think you know, seniors and other people should be aware of. A lot of times you'll get mail, and a lot of times companies are, and this has nothing at all to do with what's on the screen. I'll switch the screen to what I'm talking about. But, um, You'll get mail that looks really important. Maybe it'll be priority mail, maybe it'll be DHL, DHL mail. You know, when you see a DHL envelope you know, or priority, you figure that's important, important. And I tend to see those envelopes as it must be junk mail. And so now I'm gonna show you um, one of those pieces. And um, I got this in the mail. Let me see if I can switch it for you. Hold on, I don't have that yet. It's not that one. Ah, it's camera three. There you go. There is a piece of DHL. It looks very impressive, right? It looks really impressive, it looks really important. You get that envelope in the mail. It's like getting a FedEx or something like that. Or you'll get a priority or a bit, you get an express mail. And I saw this and I'm like, you know what? I bet it's junk mail. But can you imagine people like living alone, seniors, people who are, you know, getting a lot of things from companies and sales and marketing and all. They get something like this for a minute, your heart might race, you might think, oh my goodness, what is that? You know, what happened? If you see an envelope like that, don't get excited. Don't hold your breath, don't get excited. Just think to yourself, it's probably junk mail then you can open it later when you have time during the day. So I did take that piece of envelope, which was says DHL on it, and to me, I opened it up, and it was what I would consider junk mail. It was not anything that I sent for. 
It was not anything that I asked for. It was not anything that I needed at all. But it was indeed a company trying to sell me something. So that's our little <laughs> consumer episode, our consumer uh, marketing uh, helpful hint. When you see that important envelope, it just might not be that important. OK, so let's get back to where. Let's get back to the screen and the show that we were listening to, another episode of The You Show, Your Information Show. I, I think it was Oscar we have a few Wild minutes left. Said, to tell people the truth, make them laugh, and and, um, I think maybe we'll play the rest of this at another episode, another time, because I want to do something else. Give you another few minutes of this. Susan Brown Miller is the author of Against Our Will. You can find it in any library, in any bookstore. It was written in the 70s. It definitely was a bestseller. It's Against Our Will by Susan Brown Miller. Mr. Chappelle speaking to Susan Brownmiller and catch more on other episodes of the U Show.
write to us at the U Show at information, the U Show at Outlook.com. We're produced through the facilities of Staten Island Community Television. And nothing you hear on the show is the responsibility of the CTV producers or staff or administration. Any complaints or comments or suggestions or questions, write to the U Show at Outlook.com. The U Show is about everything. We do all topics at all times. We do consumerism, history, politics, camping, nature. 